Assume that females have pulse rates that are normally distributed with a mean of 72.0 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 12.5 beats per minute. We're going to complete parts A through C below. First question A, it says, if one adult female is randomly selected, find the probability that her pulse rate is less than 75 beats per minute. So, in this case here, we see that, notice that there's an individual value, so that an individual value from a normally distributed population has been chosen. Therefore, we're going to use the population distribution to determine the probability. So, the first thing we're going to do is, we're going to draw a picture. Okay, so we're going to draw the picture of the bell curve. Okay, and so we know that we have a mean that's given here to be 72, let's make sure you write that down here, so it's 72 beats per minute. Okay, and then we also know that the given standard deviation is equal to 12.5. All right, and so in the question it's saying that if one adult female is randomly selected, find the probability that her pulse rate is less than 75 beats per minute. So that means that we're going to take a note here, and then we're going to put in 75, since that is to the right of 72. And then we're going to draw a line up here, and then what we're concerned it with is to find the values that are less than that according to our question. So we're looking for this area, which represents the probability of that. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to find out what is the z-score. Okay, so to find the z-score, it's going to equal the data value x minus the mean over the standard deviation. Well, we can see here that 75, and let me just go ahead and erase this so I can write this as x. So we know that this is the value of x, which is equal to 75. So we know that x is 75.0, and then we're going to subtract 72.0, and then we're going to divide it by the standard deviation of 12.5, so we can determine what is the z-score. So using our calculator, we're going to take 75, subtract 72, then we're going to divide that by 12.5, and that gives us 0 0.24. So that tells us that our answer here is 0 0.24 for that z-score. So now right underneath it, we're going to draw our z-axis, and so that means that the mean here is going to be 0, and then the z-score that's associated with 75 is going to be 0 0.24. Put 2.4 there. Okay, so now in step number three, what we're interested in is, is to find the probability of when z is less than or equal to the z-score of 0 0.24. And so what we can do is we can use StatCrunch to determine that. So let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. Okay, and so then what we want to do is we're going to go to Stat, select Calculators, and then scroll all the way down to the normal distribution. Okay, so we know that the mean is given to be 0, and the standard deviation is 1. And so now we want to make sure that we want to find the probability of when the z-score is going to be less than 0 0.24. Okay, so now we get the following area. We round that to four decimal places, which gives us 0 0.5948. So 0 0.5948 represents that shaded area from where the probability is less than 75. So let's put in that probability of 0 0.5948. So 0 0.5948, and then that gives us that probability. Okay, now the next question says that if 16 adult females are randomly selected, find the probability that they have pulse rates with a mean less than 75 beats per minute. So let's go ahead and do that. So here it says, in this case, the desired probability is for the mean of a sample of 16 females. Therefore, we're going to use the central limit theorem, and the central limit theorem applies when 
a population has a normal distribution or the sample size n is greater than 30. So according to the central limit theorem, the distribution of sample means is the x bar, which is the sample mean, is approximately normal with a mean given by the mean of the sample means, which is equal to the mean. And then the standard deviation is given by the standard deviation of the sample means, which is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing like we did in the previous procedure. Okay, we're going to draw our picture, which is our bell curve. Okay, and then we know again that the mean is 72. So we know that the mean is 72, but this is the mean of the sample means. Okay, and then again, we're looking at the value of X, which is 75 beats per minute. And again, we're just gonna find the same area to the left of this. But now we need to take into consideration that we're now using this following formula for the standard deviation. So for step two, this is what we're going to do. We're now going to use the following formula. We know that Z is going to equal X minus the mean of the sample means divided by the standard deviation over the square root of N. Or in this case here, let's just write that formula out, which is over this, which then becomes X minus, again, the mean of the sample means. And this formula is the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Okay, now let's make note that our standard deviation is equal to 12.5. Okay, we know that our mean is equal to 72, and we know that n, which is equal to 16. So now we're going to plug that into our formula. So we have x, which is equal to 75, minus the mean, which is 72, over 12.5, divided by the square root of 16. Okay. So now we can go ahead and then plug this into our calculator. So 75 minus 72 is 3. Okay, and then if we take 12.5 and then divide that by the square root of 16, which is 4, well, that gives us 3.125. And so 3 divided by 3.125 gives us a z-score of 0 0.96. So now our z-axis is going to be the following. We have the mean, which is equal to 0, and now the z-score of the 16 samples is going to be 0 0.96. And so what we want to do from here now is now find the probability of when the z-score is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.96 and we're going to use StatCrunch to do that. So if we open up StatCrunch, okay, and so we're still having the mean at 0, standard deviation of 1, and now we want to make sure this is less than or equal to now the z-score of 0 0.96 and then we get the following probability and we're going to round it to four decimal places. So we get 0 0.8315. So we get 0 0.8315, 0 0.8315, and so let's put that in there, 0 0.8315, and therefore that gives us the probability there. Now it says, why can the normal distribution be used in part B even though the sample size does not exceed 30? Well, since the original population has a normal distribution, which it tells us that, the distribution of sample means is a normal distribution for any sample size. So that's going to be the answer. Okay, it says since the mean pulse rate exceeds 30, which it doesn't, since the distribution is of individuals, not sample means, that's not true. And since the distribution of sample means, not individuals, the distribution is a normal distribution for any sample size. The answer is A.